Hello YouTube. Time for a new project. You have seen this car in the background before and uh, it's pretty damn rough. I barely made it here just a test drive and uh, then it's a good starting point for me. That's how my cars how they work so. Um, winter is coming same thing as the last turbo project so I may get snowed out but so far the leaves are on the trees so but it, it is freezing at night so we, we are below freezing point uh, this car originally was an automatic uh, it had um, I think B, B21 B21 2.1 liter four cylinder Volvo engine and it was in damn good shape actually <laughs> and low mileage and everything and um, well it's not entirely other people's fault but uh, I have ruined it too so now it's got manual gearbox it got the newer dashboard uh, it got a B23 B23 2.3 liter uh, I changed all this out from a Volvo GLT from 1983 so it's a mix of 76 chassis and 83 is the dry line on this one and um, I am um, thinking about fitting a turbo on this one just for fun um, but uh, we're going to do it really low budget so I am going to use old turbos I have and an old intercooler that I have over here. So uh, here's why it's low budget. Uh, I think this turbo is from a Saab, Saab 2.3 liter, so it's not in that big actually. Uh, some old pipe cross filter, and this is one is from a Volkswagen from the beginning of the nineties. I had lying around, uh, and I ha also have prepared a little bit before all this to save money. Usually, I just buy these, but. Um, to save money I made a collector and I also I had an old flange from my previous work I worked as a CNC in a laser cutting machine and I did cut out a few of these um, flanges from the exhaust so I can build a manifold so I have prepared this one so we just have to fit the pipes between it and that's Pretty straightforward, but I'm not going to change out anything. We are going to look on the ignition and see if we can retard, not retard, a little bit less retard on the on the uh, ignition, so we don't get spikes in the system. So we have to look into that. But first, let's just build in all of this stuff on the car and see if we can make it work at at the very least, make it work and see if I get snowed out. So let's get at it.
ner banna, det är skit. Ja, så är det.
there. I think it's ready for a test run. I want to verify the timing and maybe even tweak it a little bit because with the turbo now, uh, I might. Uh, I don't. I want. I don't want it to knock pre-detonation due to the more airflow than the stock one. So uh, let's check the timing and take it for a test run. So, it's breaking up really early, like on like 3 grand mark, and it did that before too, before the turbo, uh, I would say. And, and I thought it was because I were pretty conservative on the ignition timing. So, under idle, like 8% before top descender, and when I boosted it, or when I revved it really high, up against like 25, 26, and uh, I thought that was the good end, safe end, but maybe it's a little bit too on the safe side. So we're going to tweak the timing a little bit and try again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm a bit confused. Um, the ignition timing at idle was good, and under load it went. If I can guess, it re retarded. It it went too far away from top dead center, um, which um, is the wrong direction if I'm going to run turbo, since I add more. Uh, air, this is a higher pressure, and the higher pressure is easier to ignite. So I run the risk of pre ignition or knocking. So, but uh, the weird thing is, it's okay on idle. So uh, it's a spam, and there are weights inside of the distributor with sm small springs. And, uh, but but I, I, what I can't figure out is they should be on the same span no, no matter what. You can change out the springs so it's it's in a different range of the rev, but it shouldn't be like it's 0 to 30 and all of a sudden it from 0 to 40 before top dead center. So if it's okay on idle, it should work on the on the higher revs too, and I don't get that now. I um, managed to get it running roughly on idle, but then I'm like on top dead center zero degrees and uh, the car doesn't like that at all so i have i gotta try to find a middle way here to make it run because the tur turbo sounds more mean now and it spools up it's, it's it's more gnarly so that's fun but uh, <laughs> i had to make it run too and it's leaking oil like crazy so i'm going to put some um, oil uh, some rags and stuff around the line so I don't mess out mess out the environment here um, continue Uh, it didn't fulfill all my <laughs> wishing, so I hoped for better. I, my, my, I, I must admit that um, I can't get the ignition right, or it's the Koyatronic that's. I did get a book on Koyatronic, and it didn't seem like an impossible task to overboost Koyatronic. It should be a flap that reads out the amount of air moving by. It's not like a air mass sensor in modern one that measures air density by temperature and everything. So this should be as basic as it's getting, but still injection. Um, so I did hope that it would work straight away, and maybe it does. Um, what we can learn from all this is I should stick to diesels, because <laughs> as you can see I'm having problem. Um, now it runs good and everything, but it doesn't run on the high RP RPM, just like the first test run we had. So in this case, it sounds mean and everything, but if I get it up to like three, three thousand RPM, it breaks up, and that's uh, worse than this was before the turbo. But it did break up before I did all this work, but I thought it was on the good side uh, for turboing. So I didn't make any more effort figuring that one out. So um, I, I got it up to about 07, 0.7 bars of boost, and that's probably what it originally, what it's put out on the car it came from. But uh, I'm not going to do anything near more about it right now. I had to fix that oil leak anyhow. It's like substantial oil leak. So I have to fix that before I take it on any more test drives anyhow. And as usual, winter is coming. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, maybe I'm back on diesels again after this one. <laughs> so bye bye.